the federal successes, uh, and maybe we'll have a different uh, different approach. So, you know, back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman's time has expired. The chair recognizes the gentlelady from Washington State for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you as well for your leadership um, of this committee. We really appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Secretary Vilsack, for being with us today. And thank you for your, you and your team for all the work that you've done so far on implementing this program. Um, before I get started, I have to say that I think it's a little odd that we're having this hearing right now before um, we have a lot of information just a few weeks after the request for applications went out. Um, when we have more information and you have information on the types of applications you've received, et cetera, I think it'll be an important conversation. So I hope we'll have a chance to have that conversation as well. Um, that said, these pilots are extremely important. Um, back in May of last year, I introduced the Enhancing Employment and Training Through Education Act, a three-year, $30 million competitive grant fund to encourage states to provide targeted employment and training programs. It was based on Washington State's basic food education and training program, what we call BFET. Um, which has been a highly successful program in our state. And that bill was included in the Farm Bill and um, from the start. And we fought very hard to increase funding for these pilots. And at the end of the conference committee, we have what we have today, which is a expanded program, $200 million, and up to 10 pilot programs. So I'm very excited about this. Um, Washington's BFET program has proven to be very successful at helping low-income individuals um, get jobs. Um, we have 11,000 people who have gotten jobs to date. And during the height of the recession, 60% of Washington's BFET participants found jobs. And a recent analysis of our program found that fewer than half of those enrolled remained on government assistance two years after starting the program. So that's the kind of success I think that we're hoping will stem from these pilots and greater learning on, on what can be shared amongst all of us across the country to have successful programs. Um, unlike most federal job training programs that exist today, these pilots will provide targeted employment and training resources tailored to help low-income adults currently receiving SNAP benefits. Uh, historically, programs that serve SNAP participants have provided limited job search assistance an expansion of a Washington State-style um, program will encourage states to administer programs with meaningful education and training opportunities, enable participants to obtain um, industry-recognized degrees and credentials that are definitely highly valued and um, help, help really determine long-term success. This is a smart way for us to invest now in education and training and career opportunities and save money as these workers transition off of SNAP. So thank you very much for your work on this. Um, to, can states, oh, I had one kind of um, clerical question, I guess. Um, can states submit more than one application for the, for the potential pilots? I, I don't think there's any re restriction on the number of applications that a state can submit. Uh, it, you, they might want to think about the strategy behind that uh, in terms of um, being able to distinguish the characteristics of each application. But mm -hmm. I don't think, again, we want the more applications, the better. The more creative the idea is, the better. Okay, thank you. And to what degree do you think current state um, ENT programs will intermingle with these pilots, or do you have any expectation around how that might work? Well, I, I know that uh, uh, Kevin Kincannon traveled out to Washington because of the success of your program, and so and he traveled to a number of different other states. So I'm, I'm uh, very certain that characteristics of successful programs have been identified in the application process as criteria that folks should consider. So it did give us an opportunity to begin the process of educating people about what works. Now, we obviously have to do a much better job of that. You mentioned another issue which I think speaks to the notion of folks crossing borders and searching work. <laughs> Oftentimes, states don't necessarily recognize the credentials from one state to another, uh, which may be an impediment, and it may be something that it, this process might allow us to address a bit. Mm -hmm. no, that's a great point. Thank you very much again for being here, and I yield back the remainder of my time, Mr. Chair. General lady, lady yields back. The Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Georgia, Mr. Scott, for five minutes.